In a time before Leonis and Wazette were allies, Wazette wanted to expand its territory beyond the frozen lands of eastern Ardra. Its war of expansion began with an invasion of Leonis that threw the two nations into conflict. Leonis was a small kingdom that served as a buffer between Wazette and the mighty realm of Horn. For these two great powers, Leonis would be a valuable card to hold in the battles to come. But there was more to be gained than just land. Long ago, the Winged One had entrusted the past kings of Leonis with an ancient relic, a ring. Wazette was determined to claim it as its own. Wazette launched several invasions across the Leonis border before facing and defeating King Galak in battle. King Galak left but one heir, the young Prince Elda. The invaders smelled blood. Nothing could stop their conquests now. Or so they thought. In its very moment of triumph, Wazette was dealt a tragic blow. Is that you, Mother? Kuri. How do you fare? The handmaids are besides themselves. They say you refuse to let them treat you. I don't trust them. And me? Do you distrust your own mother? I... I killed my father. My king. Enough. It was an accident, no more. I saw it unfold with my own eyes. Not just my father. I killed my brothers too. Both of them. Guri, listen to me. You... Go, mother. Leave me be. Guri... The tragedy that struck Wazette was the sudden death of the king. The king's death was an unfortunate mishap on the battlefield. Most agreed, but even so, it was Lord Kuri who had loosed the fatal arrow. In his passing, the king left three prince heirs, including Lord Kuri himself. But which of them would inherit the throne? Wazette had a tradition of dueling, which allowed those in the line of succession to secure their claim through battle. The two eldest princes had no love for their youngest brother, Lord Kuri, and hatched a plot to kill him, using the dueling tradition as a pretext. When the king died, Queen Consort Mavia became the ruling queen of Wazette. But even so, the princes pushed to invoke a duel in order to name a new king. The reason? They did not believe that King Regis' death was a mere accident. Despite Queen Mavia's angry opposition, the duel to determine the succession went ahead with Lord Kuri's consent. It was a desperate struggle but Lord Kuri managed to slay his brothers and thus become next in line to the throne. But he paid dearly with injuries that pushed him to the brink of death. Months passed and still the wounded heir lay stricken, unable to rise from his bed. I do not blame you. You did what you had to do as the son of a king, third in line to the throne. Your honor is intact. Let no one tell you otherwise. 
But in any case, contrition is a luxury we can ill afford. Our position has become precarious. <laughs> Would you have me head to the battlefield in my state then? These wounds my brothers left me with are yet to heal. Wounds you received in a duel that has made you heir to the Wizard throne. Of course, you cannot go gallivanting on the front lines. The kingdom needs you alive. That much is clear. Then what would you have us do? Seek peace with Leonis or Fennis? Never! I refuse to countenance such! Easy, my son. You'll open your wounds again. I know why you object. To negotiate for peace now will make us appear weak and give our enemies leverage to use against us. Your pride would not allow such a loss of face. Then what is to be done? Have you given thought to a familial alliance? You mean taking a wife? Yes, but one chosen carefully. A Wazet noble girl will not do. A girl from a family beyond our borders that can make the realm stronger. Exactly. The Vareds, for example. <laughs> the House of Vared rules a principality close to the border of Leonis. You have fought alongside them several times in the war against Fennis. They have a daughter, quite beautiful as you know, but also an accomplished maid who leads a brigade known as the Royal Thorns. She would make a fit queen. Fine. I'll leave it to you. But... But? If the Vareds refuse the offer, they must be destroyed. Do you understand? If we cannot have them as allies, none can. Is that it? Can it be any other way? To wed another after being offered my hand is nothing short of a declaration of war. I will not tolerate such an insult to our name. Of course. No one who spurns Wizette will go unpunished. But the decision is not yours to make. For now, I am the ruler of the realm. <laughs> and your only duty at this time is to get better. So I heard you were there, at that battle. What battle? Come on, you know the one. With Lord Kui. The Fennis ambush. A raging blizzard. King Regis surrounded in battle. Then all of a sudden, Lord Kui arrives from the castle. Charging through the Fennis lines to save King Regis, spraying arrows all over. Every one of them finding its mark somewhere fatal on a Fennis soldier. But in all the uproar and blinding snow, the king got himself in the path of one of the arrows. <sighs> Leastwise, that's what the stories say. And you want me to tell you if they're true? Well, they are. It was a terrible accident. I saw it all with my own two eyes. I've never seen anyone handle a bow like that before. Arrow after arrow of perfection. That's likely the reason why the older princes forced him into that duel. They were jealous of his abilities. But Lord Kuri didn't care. He accepted the duel. Now two princes fine warriors both, are dead, and His Highness is the sole heir to the throne. 
That said, he's sour and gloomy compared to his brothers. He only has a fraction of the support they garnered. <sighs> That's the rub, eh? Lord Kuri has to rally his forces, leave an undeniable mark on the battlefield, and solidify his claim. Right. If he's going to unite the realm, now's the time to be doing it. Hmm. Your Majesty. Prepare a squadron to march. Will we be fighting Leonis or Fenis, Your Highness? Neither. We march to the House of Vered. Oh? Don't stand there gaping. Move. And thus the Queen of Wazette marched out of the castle at the head of a small squadron. Her destination was a principality bordering on Leonis. The noble Vered family that ruled it was famed for its royal thorns, a powerful brigade of mages. Eventually, after a long march, Queen Mavia arrived at the Leonis borderlands. Your Highness? That's a fine flower. Do you really think so? Uh, of course, Your Highness. So do I. It makes you wonder, doesn't it, why flowers bloom so beautifully? I, uh, suppose that's just what flowers do? Yes, perhaps it's that simple. That they know they are flowers and thus strive to live as such, to grow and to bloom. Queen Mavia? Do you not sense it? The murderous intent that now permeates the air? S something's not right. And yet... Somehow, I feel it is not directed at us. What can this mean? We'll push on, but be careful. Ah, now it becomes clear. It was Venice soldiers that I sensed. But what are they doing here? We were not the only ones to be attacked by Venice. They have also been plundering and burning villages in Leonis lands. The Vereds are fighting to protect the villagers from the attacks. So the scum are fighting us? Leonis? And now the Vereds too? That is the way of these savages. So, if we pitch in here and send Fenis packing, the Vereds, why, they'll... I have no intention of forcing a debt of honor upon them. But, but it's a golden opportunity! We can make ourselves a new ally! Enough of the politics, soldier. S sorry Your Highness. Fenis is our enemy, and thus they must be destroyed. We need no other reason. Let us move. Troops are striking the other flank! Their reputation is well earned. It seems they were prepared for this raid. Queen Mavia, you are a long way from your castle. Ah. 
I do not see the mages of your famous royal thorns. They went to defend a village in Leonis that was under attack by Fenis forces. Ah, then that can only mean... You surmise correctly. They likely thought House Vered to be unguarded with the absence of the Royal Thorns and launched an attack against us. Hmm. Until now, Fenis has always made their forays into our lands by way of numbers. But the attack this time is clearly different. A change in strategy. But why? I cannot say for sure, but it is possible they have made new alliances. In any case, it seems that we can no longer afford to dismiss Fenis as mere savages. Even more reason to wipe them out. Indeed. Men, show them no mercy! Kill them all! The enemy has been routed. Your troops do your name no injustice. The men stand stalwart, even without your royal thorns. Now then. I presume there's a reason for your highness to be out here in the borderlands. Indeed. I am here to ask that your daughter wed Kuri my son and heir to the throne. Well, well. An honor indeed. Surely my daughter cannot be so worthy. Believe me when I say that she is. I never imagined that the royal family of Wezet would go to such ends to make a claim on our humble house. Yet here I am. I assure you the request is most sincere. Anxious for your answer, your lordship. I would rather not have to give one, your highness. What? In truth, I would be most grateful if you withdrew your offer, as generous as it is. Why, you? Stand down. But... Did you not hear me? My apologies. Very well. We shall pretend this discussion never happened. Forgive me, your highness. Not at all. You must do what you feel best for your own family. Men, listen to me. You will not breathe a word of this to anyone. Understood? Yes, Your Highness! Then it is time for us to leave. Meanwhile... Never did I, Helena, imagine that Lord Kuri would seek my hand in marriage. At the same moment Queen Mavia was fighting alongside the Vereds, I was in a village in Leonis, fighting my own hard battle against Fenis soldiers. Lady Helena, watch my back. I will keep you safe, my lord. I fought alongside the young king of Leonis. Even though he had inherited an ancient ring bestowed by the Winged One, he chose not to flaunt its power. Instead, he strove to keep his realm neutral and forge alliances with his neighbors.
Look, they're unharmed. King Elda smiled with satisfaction when he saw the relieved faces of children returning to the village. We fought together against Fenis on more occasions than I could possibly remember. Over time, our discussions changed from solely being about matters of warfare. Ah, oh, what I'd give to talk with you about things other than this blasted fighting. Of hunting. Of flowers. Of poetry. Of the great waterfall in the west that separates these lands from the heavens. I came to understand that was his way of showing his goodwill toward me. But on that day, there was something new in his voice. My lord? King Elda dropped to one knee and lowered his head to me. If you hold this moment to be as precious as I do, I beseech you, do not leave me with words of parting. Instead, please take my hand and return with me to Leona's castle. Leonolia? The royal flower of Leonis. Lady Helena? My lord... I... I cannot answer now. Would you give me more time? I must think not only of my own happiness, but also that of everyone who serves the Bered family. Two days after receiving King Elda's proposal, I left the Vered estate and set out for Leona's castle on my own. I see. Thank you for your answer. Forgive me. There is nothing to be forgiven. We must all choose the path we feel is best for us. Raise your head, my lady. Your proposal made me happy, my lord. What a joy it would be to cast off the shackles that bind me and fall into your heart. But I am the only daughter of House Fered. I cannot become the spark that ignites war. War? How could your decision possibly lead to such a thing? Unless... Lord Kuri... Does he seek your love as well? Love? Love has little to do with it, I warrant. I see. I was unaware of such developments. I'm sorry. For what? You chose not for your family's sake, but for the future of all our people. Yet, for my part, I only thought of myself and my realm. My actions shame me. King Elda. However, I beg that we can continue to be allies in protecting the frontier villages. Of course. Reporting! What is it? A message, your majesty. Small bands from Fennis have been spotted throughout Wazet, burning and plundering everything in their path. They are targeting villages and towns, and forts too. 
Tannis is growing more cunning. Harder to predict. We have long thought of them as mere savages, whose only strength was the size of their armies. But it appears we must reassess how we view them now. These raids are meant to weaken Wazette. Undoubtedly. If this continues, Wazette will be lost before Lord Kuri is able to recover from his wounds. Meanwhile, in Wazette, It's too dangerous! Venice is trying to lure you into a trap! Would you have me continue to sit by and watch? N no but... We have sent out two brigades already, and both vanished, with no report of their whereabouts. It would be wise to assume these are no longer the same savages we have fought so many times before. But, if you lead the army out to face them, who will command the defense of the castle? I mean, if this is a trap, they're bound to be hiding a larger force, poised to strike at us. I'll hear no more of this cowardice. Would you have us twiddle our thumbs here while our people are slaughtered? N no of course not, Your Highness. I am the Queen of Wazette and it is my sworn duty to protect its people. We will drive away the barbarians and teach them to never defile our lands again. Soldiers, prepare to march! If I may be so bold, Your Majesty. This might be a chance to finally bring the war with Vizette to an end. You mean to attack Wazette? In its stricken state, Wazette will fall even if we were to ignore their plight. Surely you don't think Fennis can bring down mighty Wazette? On its own, no. However, when Horde sees what is going on, they will surely grasp the opportunity to destroy their archenemies. <sighs> Horn lies in the center of Ardra and is under constant threat from the Great Houses both east and west. But if Wazette were to fall, the danger to their east would disappear. That would leave Horn free to turn its attention to a new target, namely Leonis. But Leonis is Horn's ally. For now, yes. Leonis serves a useful purpose as a buffer between Wazette and Horn. But if Wazette were to fall to Horn, Leonis would become a blot on the map, surrounded on all sides by Horn. How long do you think Horn would continue to call us an ally then? Uh, so you mean to have Leonis strike at Wazette to circumvent such an outcome? Lady Helena, it is time you return to Vered. But... Ready the chocobos. Leave a token garrison and prepare the rest of the men to march. King Elda. It is true that if Wazette were to fall, there would be nothing to stop me from marrying King Elda. But I could not help but consider Leonis. They oft had cause to defend their borders, but never before had they set out to invade another realm. They had always sought to douse the flames of war, not use their might for purposes that may feed those flames. Fear filled my heart. 
If Leonis were to swallow Wazette and grow mighty, would Horn watch with disinterest? Would their amicable ties still endure? As a nation's strength grows, so too does its enemies. This future could not be allowed to pass. I did not return home that day. Soldiers, we march on Wazette! Never before have we sent our soldiers beyond our own borders. But this is our one great opportunity to finally bring peace to Eastern Ardra. A small garrison will stay in the castle. We attack with every man we have! Move out! Yeah! Next, we go north of Sickle Fortress to the village of Bilal. Queen Mavia, if I may. The sun is low, and soon night will fall. I propose we camp here, and set off again at dawn. The night marches are taking their toll. The men are fine. Our concern is you, Queen Mavia. You've fought from village to town to village and back again, without a moment's rest. We've been able to draw on reserves from the castle every three days to allow the troops to rest. But you haven't returned to the castle once since this campaign began. My place is here. A commander must lead at the front. Even as we speak, my subjects are put to the sword by those barbarians. But, your highness... If I leave now, Venice would smell blood and renew their attacks like beasts on wounded prey. We must be relentless and must crush this invasion so utterly that they never again dare trespass on our lands. Now, Prepare to march. If we leave before sundown, we should reach the village of Bilal by dawn. The Wazette army, led by Queen Mavia, raced from one village to the next to meet the invaders and drive them back. But no sooner did they save one village than another came under attack. Her forces marched across the countryside, as if pulled by an unseen force from battle to battle. But what choice did she have? It was either that, or watch innocents be slaughtered. Despite her exhaustion, her wounds, Queen Mavia would fight on for the sake of her people. Her army marched through the night, hunched against the bitter cold and swirling snow. Eventually, as the pale morning sun rose to greet them, they drew close to their destination, the village of Bilal. So, the village lies at the other end of this valley? Does something trouble you, Your Highness? No, it's nothing. Come on, men. We make haste for the village. Your Highness? A rumbling from the earth. <laughs> Fall back! On the devil! It's a trap! It was indeed a trap they had marched into. Fennish soldiers lay waiting on the cliffs above, and when Queen Mavia and her men entered the valley, they triggered an avalanche. 
A wave of stones and snow ran down the valley walls and fell upon the Wazette army. Your Highness, you're alive! Where are the rest of the men? Swallowed by the snow. I see. <sighs> if this was Venice's doing, they'll have sent men down to finish off the survivors. Fine with me. Let us have at them! We dare not. You mean, you're saying we should run? I suppose it is not what you expect from me. Normally I would give the order to push forward, to give no ground. But that was against the old Fennis. Savages who relied only on their overwhelming numbers and little else. They've changed their methods, and so must we. I shall slow them down. Go now, quickly! But Lady Mavia, we can't leave you here. You are only armed with swords, yet I have my bow. Needless to say, it is clear who is better equipped to keep the enemy at bay. I, I, I cannot deny that, but... Fear not. I'll be right behind you. Now go! That's an order! It, yes, Your Highness. What is it? Oh no! Good heavens! <sighs> what are they doing here? We're just in time, it appears. For what, pray tell? To save your skins from a grim fate. I don't understand. You could put an end to me, to the Wazette that you so hate. I thought it best if we suitors for Lady Helena's hand learned to get along. Whomever of us she chooses, Lady Helena's marriage will plunge East Ardra into war. At least, that is what she believes. Leonis cares not for growing its might or expanding its domain. We want stability, prosperity, and peace in our time. Considering our ideals, it was obvious to me what must be done. That being... to fight at our side. Starting this very moment, if you're willing. We can protect our beloved East Ardra from the Barbarian Horde. King Elder. You have my deepest thanks. Then it's settled. We fight. From this day, for the sake of both our peoples, our nations shall stand together as one. We will drive the savages of Venice from these wintry lands! Soldiers, forward! <clears throat> they keep coming and coming. What they lack in quality, they make up in sheer numbers. King Elder. Worry not. But... We must protect Wazette for the sake of peace in East Ardra. Come now. Together we can do this. Please. I cannot have you face further danger in our name. Then allow me to let...
lend a hand. The Royal Thorns stand ready. Lady Helena. You said you were marching out for the sake of peace in East Ardra. You were only telling me enough to keep House Vered out of the fighting. You had me fooled. At least until I'd seen you off and then thought about what you'd said. I should have known such a ploy could not deceive you, Lady Helena. Well, Your Highness, shall we do this? Very well. Although the Barbarians threw everything they had at us, our new alliance stood firm and the invaders wavered, then broke. It was a hard-won victory, but we saved Wazette from being consumed by the Fenis Horde. Several days later, Queen Mavia visited Leonis. There, she formally requested a cessation of hostilities with Leonis. An alliance between our nations? Yes. What say you? The choice is clear. This is the path we were surely meant to tread. I gratefully accept your offer. This is most heartening. We are one step closer to lasting peace in East Ardra. I noticed something. Yellow flowers blooming near the Vered estate. Are you familiar with them? Yellow flowers? They could well be Leonolius, the royal flower of Leonis. Funny that they'd be growing out there. A good thing though, surely. I love that flower. Perhaps more than I expected I would. Is that so? Then I'll have them planted all along the high road from the Wazette border to my own Leonis castle. As a sign of welcome. A symbol of our alliance. What a splendid idea. A road lined with beautiful yellow blossoms. A road leading to a happier and better future. An unbreakable bond between our two realms. Let it be so. It was at this moment that Queen Mavia surprised King Elda by announcing that she had brought with her a guest. That guest was me, Helena Vered. The truth was that some days previously at Queen Mavia's behest, the still recovering Lord Kuri had become engaged to a young woman from a noble Wazette family. He objected at first, still hoping to unite his family with my family, the Vereds, but was eventually persuaded by his mother. And thus, Queen Mavia announced there was nothing standing in the way of my union to King Elda. Lady Helena. Queen Mavia. I... I saw the royal flower of Leonis blooming near the Verret estate. Were they... Planted by me? Yes. So that was your doing, Lady Helena. That is how I understood the truth of Lady Helena's heart. <laughs> now, there is nothing to keep you apart. My lord, would you honor me with one of those flowers once again? No matter how many times I see it, I am struck by its beauty. I 
believe it is the most beautiful flower in the world. I became Queen Consort of Leonis, and together with my husband, lived many happy days. Until that fateful day, when we were blessed with two children, Mont and Stern. The Winged One. How did you get in? It is time to fulfill your promise. What promise? Do not prevaricate. The promise written in the ancient tome of Leonis. <laughs> promise? What is he talking about? Leonis can only have one heir. If there are two, the nation will be torn asunder. No! Take my life instead. But please, spare our children! I understand that it is a painful promise to uphold. But such were the terms upon which the ancient ring was bestowed. You may break our covenant if you wish. But know that I will retake the ring. If we refuse to do either? Then I shall strike you down. <laughs> what cruelty this is! Gilgamesh, I will honor the covenant made between you and my ancestors. But... Which of the two children I must choose to sacrifice for the sake of Leonis? Are you capable of telling me now, at this very moment? Hmm. I ask that you grant us time. Time. Until they reach manhood, the age of 18. Then I will choose which of them is best suited to wear the crown of Leonis. Hmm. A reasonable request, is it not? Very well. But heed my warning. If you choose again not to uphold this agreement... You can do as you see fit. I'll neither run nor hide. Hmm. Fear not, my love. But... When they come of age... I won't let either of them be killed. Even if it means fighting Gilgamesh, even if it means we must fall afoul of the gods. I swear, I shall protect the blood of Leonis. I swear it upon my life. <laughs>